Nothing on the Bonnell Foundation's Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast should be considered medical advice. Medical advice can only come from your CF physician. Cystic fibrosis can be a devastating diagnosis, but living with the disease can bring positivity and a new appreciation for each day. From the Bonnell Foundation in Detroit, Michigan, it's the Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast, sponsored by Beatrice, Genentech, and Vertex. Here's your host, Laura Bonnell. We're talking today with the woman responsible for getting the CF Legal Information Hotline up and running. Attorney Beth Suffian works just about around the clock helping and answering questions from people in the CF community. She has helped this foundation when our community has questions that we just can't answer, we go to her. And she is well known in the CF community. Beth is 57 years old and has cystic fibrosis. We will also be talking about the CF Social Security Project. She will answer questions about the Social Security Project and how the process works when someone is applying for Social Security benefits. Beth is the director of the CF Legal Information Hotline, which has been providing legal information to the CF community for 25 years. Beth is also the author of three books and hundreds of articles related to the legal rights of people with CF and other disabilities. So Beth, it is great to see you again, even if we're on Zoom. I always love to see what you're doing. You're so busy. And just start by saying thank you. You're always a wealth of information to me and to the foundation. Whenever somebody has a question and I'm like urgently need an answer, you're always there for me. So thank you for that. I really appreciate that. And you're there really for the CF community, which I love and we need you so much. And I also wanted to point out that you are 57 years old. You've passed the, you know, life expectancy for people born today with CF because it's 56. So hooray, yay. That's wonderful. Yes, it's great. <laughs> it is <Very> great. Happy. <laughs> and so you're an attorney with your husband, correct? Uh, yes, I have a law firm and we have six people that work with us. So the two partners are myself and my husband, who is James Passamano, who is also an attorney. And then we have five other people that are working for us. That's wonderful. I know you're very busy because there's such a huge need, not only in the CF community, but for everyone, but certainly in the CF community. And I wanted to start out by talking about your CF legal information hotline, because it is so important. And I do send people there frequently when there's a question I cannot answer. I'm like, oh, you're going to need to talk to Beth and try this CF legal information hotline. How does that work? And how do you help people that way? So the CF Legal Information Hotline is actually in its 25th year. I started that when I started just getting referrals from my own CF doctor and CF clinic because they knew I was a lawyer. And the first two years I practiced law, I was not focusing on CF. I was working at a big law firm and I was doing litigation. So that's cases that go to trial. So during that time, I would get calls from people. A lot of the calls were related to Social Security benefits or issues with health insurance. And I would try to find the answer and then I would give the people information. So when I left the big law firm and started my own law firm, I decided to start a hotline, a legal information hotline, where I could give people information so they could advocate for themselves in different areas of their life. Because there's very few lawyers that do disability law. Most of them are doing social security cases. And I found that when people were armed with information about their legal rights, they were a lot of times able to advocate for themselves for things that they needed. So that's how the CF Legal Information Hotline started. And for, I've lost track, but this is our 25th year, but we have received funding from the CF Foundation, I think for about 12 years. So while we're not employees of the CF Foundation, they do give us funding that allows us to have the CF Legal Information Hotline. We get about 800 to 900 calls a month, and people are able to talk to a lawyer that only does CF work, and that is not a volunteer who's looking up what the law is, which I did on the, in the early days, and 
The other thing is that because we hear from people usually from all 50 states every month, occasionally. So there's not a lot of people in Hawaii <laughs> who, who are living in Hawaii who have CF because there's only a military-based CF doctor in Hawaii for anyone who doesn't know that. Uh, so there's not a lot of people with CF that are living in Hawaii. And so most of the time we're getting calls from people in 49 states. So we're able to see trends in how laws are being applied. We're able to see trends in how Social Security is interpreting their regulations. And that's really very helpful. So we get a lot of calls and we try to talk to people as soon as we can. And the best way to contact the hotline is by email. And I think hopefully you can post our email. Mm -hmm. In the show notes, C yeah. Right. That's cflegal at suffianpassamano.com. That's the quickest way to get the hotline is to send an email because we check our emails about every five minutes and then you get an email. It says, let's set up a time. Here's the available times that we have. And people then let us know when they're available to talk. The phone number is 1-800-622-0385. But you will only get a voicemail and you will have to leave a voicemail with your phone number and then we'll have to play phone tag with you for a little while to set up the call. So it is better to email to set up a call. And then all calls are free, so there's no charge. And then all calls are confidential, so we can't tell anyone what you tell us. And we can give information, but we can't give legal advice and tell you what to do or tell you how to handle a case. It's an information hotline, which is allowed under the rules for attorneys. So what if somebody needs to hire you? Can they hire you through that information line? So typically, the only kind of cases that we're handling are Social Security cases or Social Security continuing disability reviews. So if someone calls the hotline and we think we can help them with a Social Security case, then we can take the case under our other project, which is the CF Social Security project. That is also funded generously by the CF Foundation, and that allows us to help someone with CF with an initial application for Social Security benefits at no charge or with a Social Security continuing disability review. The important thing is, is people need to call us before they start an application or before they start their review paperwork, because the paperwork looks like it may not be hard to fill out on your own, but it's very tricky and it's very hard to do a Social Security case on your own. Once you get denied, often there's not a way we can fix the mistakes that people made when they applied mm -hmm. on their own. So most people know about us. We've been doing this work for 25 years. CF centers know about us. I know there's some new social workers that may not know about us. But, you know, if you know someone, your friend with CF online who says they think they're going to apply for Social Security, it's really good to let them know about our projects and to have them email so we can talk to them on the phone. We still have people who say, I didn't know about you. I've been waiting for a decision on my appeal from my Social Security application for three years. Wow. That's someone who doesn't use us. And I think right now people are getting very bad information about how Social Security works. And can I we think... start with that? <laughs> can we start talking about before anybody does anything, why does somebody need the Social Security? And then how you go about it. Sure. So there's two types of Social Security disability. There's one that is called Social Security disability for people who have worked in the United States and paid Social Security taxes into the Social Security system for a certain period of time. So I've been working for almost 30 years 
and paying Social Security taxes into the Social Security system, if I became unable to work due to a serious health condition, I would be able to apply for Social Security, provide evidence that I cannot work more than 20 hours a week, and I cannot work making more than $1,470 before taxes are taken out of the check per month if I'm employed from someone. And if I'm self-employed, the number is now $1,050. Those are the numbers for work income for 2023. Every year, the numbers change. But the 20 hours a week has always been the amount of hours maximum that you can work. So if you are unable to work more than 20 hours, making more than that 1470 then you could apply for Social Security and you would get a monthly check based on how much money you've paid into the Social Security system. So if you've only worked for four years making $20,000 a year, you're going to get a smaller check than someone who maybe worked for 20 years making $50,000 a year. The amount of Social Security disability benefit that you will get is based on how much you've worked and how much you've paid into the Social Security system through the Social Security tax. Okay. That's and Social Security disability. Disability. Okay. And then what is the other half piece that you're going to be talking about? So the other type of Social Security benefit is called SSI, Supplemental Security Income. SSI is for people who have not worked enough to get Social Security disability. So if you are 18 and you have CF and you've never worked, you cannot get Social Security disability. You must have worked a certain amount of time. So the federal government says if you're unable to work, but you're not eligible for Social Security disability because you've never worked or you've only worked a little, you can apply for a benefit called SSI. SSI has the same medical rules and the same work rules, but it has different non-medical rules. And those are rules related to having very low income and very low assets. So if you're only eligible for SSI, You have to have, if you're an individual, less than $2,000 in assets. You can own one house and one car, but all the other assets have to equal less than $2,000. If you're a parent and you have one child with CF and only one parent in the home, then the maximum asset is $2,000. If there's two parents in the home and one child, the maximum asset is 3000 And no matter how many people are in the household, the maximum asset limit is 3000 So that's for SSI. So sometimes a lot of people online right now are trying to give Social Security information to people with CF that are not true. Uh, sometimes people get mixed up between the programs. Just Even like the Medicaid, the Medicare, I mean. the Right. So people sometimes tell you, oh, for SSDI, you can't have any money. And so we have people frantically trying to use their money and spend it and buy things. And they're on SSDI. And SSDI does not care about how much money you have. The- SDI is only caring about your medical condition and how much you're working. That's it. SSI is caring about your medical condition, how much you're working, and if you are living in poverty. SSI is for people who are living in poverty. And if you're not living in poverty, you are not eligible for SSI. So it's kind of easy to remember if you remember SSDI is work, concerned about work. You could have a million dollars in the bank. SSDI doesn't care. SSI is for people who are living in poverty. There's a third type of benefit, 
And some people with CF are qualifying for this benefit. And it is Social Security based on a parent's work record. So you don't have enough to get SSDI on your own, but your parent is either deceased, retired and getting Social Security benefits, or parent is getting disability benefits themselves from Social Security. If the person with CF or any other medical condition has been held to be disabled according to Social Security in an award letter from Social Security prior to their 22nd birthday, the person with CF can get a benefit based on their parents' work record. So that's confusing to a lot of people, but that's the third type of Social Security. It's not Social Security disability. It's Social Security based on a parent's work record. If you have CF and you're deemed disabled at age 27, Mm -hmm. you cannot get a benefit based on the parent's record because you were not found to be disabled under Social Security's rules prior to turning 22. In addition, if you're held to be disabled by Social Security before you turn 22, but at 25, you go and work full time, you can't then get a benefit from the parent's work record in the future because you've kind of broken the chain of not working more than the allowable. And so the SSDI, that is for... The patient then? Yes. SSDI is me. I have CF. I'm 57. God forbid something happens to me. I get too sick to work more than 20 hours a week, making more than $14.70 a month. I can apply for Social Security and I get a benefit based on what I have paid in Social Security taxes into the Social Security system. So it's for the person with the disability who has worked but finds themselves unable to work more than 20 hours now. And then can you go back and forth on that? If then your health gets better, you go back to work and then, you know, CF is very much a roller coaster. Is that a situation where you can go on and off of that? So if you go to work making more than 20 hours a week and making more than the 1470, you on SSDI can get nine months of a trial work period. And after that nine months, if you're still working over the allowable, your benefit stops. If later you're not able to work, you reapply. You may have lost some of your work credits, the money you've accrued, if there's a long period before you go back on Social Security. So it's not a guarantee you'll get the same SSDI check, but if later you're unable to work, you can certainly apply again. Yes. Interesting. And really, people need experts like you because, my gosh, it can be so confusing. So if it's Social Security, just, I was going to say simply Social Security, but I don't think anything's simple. But if it's Social Security, then they can apply when? So there's social security disability. You're applying when you're too sick to work more than 20 hours and more than 1470. If it's SSI, same thing. You're applying when you cannot work more than 20 hours, making more than 1470 because of your health. That's the same for SSI. And the last one is going to be, let's say you're already getting SSI and your parent dies and you've been getting SSI since you were 21 or 18, Mm -hmm. then you could switch. Well, they will switch you to your parent benefit, but they will do a new medical review. So hundreds and hundreds of people every month with CF think that they will automatically be approved on that medical review and get their parents benefit, but it's the same paperwork for a new application. So those are people who should call the CF Legal Information Hotline to see if we could help them. Because a lot of people think it will not be hard to stay on the benefit when they're being re-evaluated medically. And it's very hard right now 
for people to do that medical evaluation part themselves. And so what cases do you see the most of? You know, what do you deal with most often in regard to Social Security? Well, I mean, most of the time we're helping people with an application or someone's being reviewed and we're helping them with the review. So on the hotline, we also are getting a lot of questions about overpayments. So during the first two two and a half years of COVID, they were not doing many checks to see if people were over the asset limit for SSI once they got on benefits or if people were working over the allowable. Now, Social Security has a lot of people checking the records and they're finding some people should not have gotten benefits for many, many months, which means the person owes Social Security the money they were paid. And Social Security can come back and say, oh, we made a mistake. You shouldn't have gotten benefits for the past three years and you owe us $80,000. They can do that. They can go back as far as they want because people are supposed to know if they're going over the allowable. And so people in the past two and a half years sort of got a break, but now they are finding out that there's overpayments and people then have to either appeal if they think the overpayment is not right or ask for a waiver if they think there's a reason the person should not have to pay or do a payment plan so that they can start to pay back the overpayment, which works for a lot of people. It can be a low amount and it allows you to avoid Social Security taking your tax return or garnishing your wages. So if you get an overpayment notice, you can call the hotline, the CF Legal Information Hotline, and we can give you information on your options on how to deal with the overpayment. But we don't have funds to represent people in an overpayment. And we find that people can do that themselves if they have the information they need to go forward. So putting the overpayment notice in your drawer and hoping it will disappear is not a good idea. When you're doing that, if (laughs) my gosh, people, that's a lot of money. I mean, I know that was just one example, but so if people are in that situation, are they being charged interest then to pay it back? you're not charged interest. Good question. (laughs) Very good question. That's good to know for people. Oh, my gosh. You're not charged interest. I mean, one of the way to look at it is like, well, you had the money and you could use it. Now you have to pay it back, but you don't have to pay with interest. But if you don't contact Social Security and you are continuing to get benefits, they'll stop your benefit. So if you still need your benefit, it's not a good idea to wish the overpayment away. Like people say, I thought maybe if I did nothing, they would forget about it. So they're not going to forget about overpayments. Congress, certain people in Congress have been really pushing them to find overpayments. So they are not going to forget about the overpayments. That's a priority for them right now. I would guess that you could tell me that most people don't know anything about Social Security SSI and SSDI. I mean, this has been a real education and very eye-opening for me. And as you, you know, talked a little bit about, if people start this on their own, I can see why they get so confused. So what do you come upon when people come to you? I would guess you have a hodgepodge of situations, different kinds of situations with people. I think a lot of times there are calls about people who CF Center did tell them, you should call these people. The director has CF, which, you know, I tell all the CF Center, CF Foundation, I like, you can tell people I have CF, you can tell them I'm 57. If that helps them to call a lawyer on the phone, that's fine. I'm happy for people to know that. And so I think a lot of CF Centers really are excellent at referring people to us to talk on the CF Legal Information Hotline. 
you know, I do think more so in the past six months. I don't know why this is, but I do think on social media, people who are on Social Security might think that they know how Social Security works, have just been giving people bad information. And even people with CF who and and other disabilities as well, Mm -hmm. they may have been on Social Security for a long time, but they themselves sometimes get mixed up on SSDI or SSI. Some people do get two checks. So let's say they only worked for two years full time and stopped work. Mm -hmm. They might have a Social Security disability check of $200, which would allow them to get $714 in most states from SSI. But, you know, it it just sounds like from some of our callers in the past six months that there are these people, I wish I knew who they were, who are telling people incorrect information. And, you know, one of the big ones is it's 20 hours a week or 1470, but it's both. So if you're working 35 hours a week and you're making 1400 a month, once your nine trial work months are up for SSDI, you're not eligible and you're terminated. And when you appeal, you don't really have a good appeal because you worked over the hour allowable. So I think a big thing is just misinformation from people or You can be on SSI, but have as much money as you want in the bank, which is not true. And the most recent one is you need to be medically eligible. So some people now have better health than before. uh, And if they're medically reviewed, they still have to show why their medical condition prevents them from working more than 20 hours and more than the 1470. And so I think there are a lot of people still who call and say, I have CF. I get Social Security for life. And that is just not true. That has never been true. You must continue to either meet the medical criteria or show you have a medical condition that is as severe as the medical criteria. And I think that's where people have trouble navigating the paperwork, especially for continuing disability review. I'll tell you that people with CF want to work. I've never talked to anyone. We've gotten over 100,000 calls from either parents, CF centers, people with CF. Nobody with CF says they don't want to work. So they can't work because of their health or they can't maintain their health because of CF. But everybody wants to work. And most people with CF do a really good job about downplaying their limitations. And that's the CF way. I think that generally for your life, downplaying your symptoms in your own mind is great, you know, because you don't want to wake up every day and be like, oh, my gosh, I've got to do five treatments in the morning and I have to do this and I have to do that. And, and so I think that that's fine. But in terms of Social Security, it's the opposite. You have to focus on all of your daily limitations. And that's hard for people to do. So if we are representing someone in an application or a review, We do a lot of sort of (laughs) hand-holding through the phone line. Obviously, we're not seeing it in person. Mm -hmm. But we do a lot of trying to just talk. People say, okay, we know this is going to be hard, but we have to talk about, like, how long does it take you to do your treatments? How many times do you go to the bathroom? Do you go to the bathroom seven times a day for 20 minutes each time? It would be hard to work more than 20 hours if that's the situation. And so I do think the biggest obstacle to people getting benefits when they do it themselves is that they just don't understand the importance of each question that Social Security asks, and they just don't want to write about their limitations. And so when people do the application themselves, a lot of times they're denied because the paperwork just doesn't give a good picture of what it's like every day and what your limitations are. 
And really, just saying you have CF does not get you approved for benefits in any way or imagination or anything. You don't get approved just by saying you have CF. Even saying you have CF and you have low lung function without talking about your limitations will result in a denial. And we see that every week of people who on their own do an application. Someone online says, just say you have a low FEV1 and show the PFT result and you'll get approved. And the person gets denied. Even someone recently with a 16% FEV1. And that's because the person did not talk about their daily limitations. And there's lots of people that work with low FEV1. And Social Security knows that. So it's not that you just show you have low FEV1. You also have to show what that means for your daily activities and what limitations that causes you. Yeah. And knowing the system like you do, I mean... What do you think of the system? Do you think it works for people? And if you were like queen of the world and you could change something, what would you change? Or is this a good system? I mean, overall, it's a good system. What I would change right now is I would have more employees hired by Social Security because right now there are a lot of long COVID cases, millions And that has really drawn out the time it takes to get a decision. Mm -hmm. And so Social Security says they're trying to hire people. I can't imagine why they can't get people to work a government job that has fantastic insurance and you can work remote. I'm not sure how they can't find people, but uh, maybe they can't. I don't know. But if they had more people, I think that would be really helpful. I think overall, if you understand how the system works, you cannot get approved. And and I think it's very hard for people to understand what they have to prove. We have a lot of people that call, especially parents, and they say, my child needs Medicaid or my adult child needs Medicaid. So can you file an application for benefits? And I say the question has nothing to do with your need for benefits in insurance. It has everything to do with your daily limitations and your health. So I think more information, understanding what the rules are for any law is extremely helpful. You know, I mean, when I was in college and I arrived at my college in the South and I had no air condition in my dorm and I'm from Houston and Everything is air conditioned here. Even outside is air conditioned. Like it's just air conditioned everywhere, even when I was little. And so after about five days, I just passed out from heat stroke. And then like 20 people from the dorm carried me to the CF Center, which miraculously was across the street, (laughs) Uh, which, you know, was a good place to go to school. But we didn't know that we could ask for an accommodation of having an air conditioner unit. We didn't know that. My parents didn't know that. My CF center didn't know that. Nobody knew that. And so the school just kept saying, we can't give you an air conditioner. You could move off campus. You know, as a freshman, I was like, I don't really want to move off campus. I just got here. Uh, And so later on, when I started practicing in the area of disability law and started reading about all the truth, the law that could have helped me, I really, from my own experience, came up with the idea of the CF Legal Information Hotline because if people do know their legal rights, it's much easier to assert the right to something if you know the law that provides that protection. Absolutely. So, I mean, knowledge is power, as they say, right? It is just we. Yes. It's so important for all of us to be on top of it, but it also takes so much work. You're trying to understand the insurance side of it and then the CF side of it and then just get your kids, you know, to do their treatments in the morning when they're young and then when they're older, help transition them to insurance. There's so much. And then you're an adult like you are and then you're on your own. So having someone like you and that CF hotline, everyone should be using it. I mean, they really need your help. 
I mean, the amount of calls you have is enormous already, and I'm not surprised because there are so many questions out there. But what a right. gift that you're able to give people with that. We're happy to have it. We're, of course, grateful for CF Foundation to provide the funding. Like 1995, I would say, we started helping people with Social Security cases for appeals because we didn't have any funding to do applications. We would have people, they were so sick. They clearly met the criteria. They had waited for a hearing for a very long time. And many of them passed away before we could get to a hearing. And now when they're doing a lot of disability reviews, it lets us help with a disability review so that eligible people with CF do not lose their benefit because they do not understand the importance of the paperwork. We have so many people that say to us, I didn't think it was really important. Someone online told me I have benefits for life. I just need to say I have, you know, CF. And I filled it out in the grocery store line. And I'm like, Whoa. Oh. <laughs> you know, then I'm not in a sing-songy voice, but I'm very <laughs> close to ears because it's tragic. And, right. and it's stressful know. for that family who thinks they did it right. And then they find, you know, right. like you said, the process is so difficult to get it turned around. Anyway, anyone, if you have a friend online that says they've just gotten paperwork from Social Security, it is free to call us. We do not charge. And if we can help, with an application or a review, there's never a charge. We don't take a percentage of back money. We don't ever ask for money for anything. It's free to contact us because we would just, we, we would like to help people because it's just heartbreaking when people who really should be getting benefits or should not have gotten terminated contact us way down the line because they didn't know about us or they didn't understand. Mm -hmm. So any help, anybody can direct people to the CF Legal Information Hotline. We just would like to help people. Uh, oh, it's so needed. You're so needed. And I thank you. You actually make it interesting. I never thought like, I mean, Social Security would be, it is interesting though. It's interesting to learn about the three different kinds and how you qualify for it. And yeah, you are just a wealth of information. So thank you. And and the number and the email is in our show notes for anybody that needs help. They should definitely give you a call. It's crazy not to. It's free. You I know mean, what they you're... don't have to. <laughs> but for people that don't know about us or maybe don't really understand our experience. I, you know, I think a lot of people in the community have called us and had good experiences. And I know a lot of people do encourage people to reach out to us. But, you know, Social Security for people that are living in poverty with CF can be life-saving. Right. It gives people money to have a pay for their car to be fixed, to take their child to the doctor. It gives people money to buy better food. It gives people money to live in a better housing situation. Mm -hmm. So it's really for a lot of people that are low or middle income. It gives them the money that they can use to make a better life for either themselves or their children. And right. I think that kind of gets lost with some people Maybe. And, you know, certainly for people that have a lot of money or have a lot of parent support, I think that's great. But for people that don't, we have a lot of people that are young adults and they don't have any family to help them. So and having also, the security is really important. And you can work part time under the allowables and get the Social Security check for SSDI. For SSI, if you work, there is a reduction of your check. But still, it can allow you to have more money and stable money. Mm -hmm. So during the first year of COVID, when, you know, people were not wanting to go anywhere, including me, people who had that monthly check when they weren't able to work, it kept them from being evicted. It kept them from not being able to, you know, buy food or buy things that they needed to stay healthy. I mean, it is a really good thing to have for those who need it. And for those who can work full time, that's terrific. It really is. And it also reminds me, you know, we get 
request for financial assistance every single day. And we do assist with medical assistance and all that, you know, surrounds that and lung transplant grants and everything else we do. But we do not make car payments and we don't pay for rent unless it's a lung transplant grant. That's an exception. But it just reminds me to tell these people if they qualify for Social Security, I mean, to give you a call or to research it, because if that's a need that they have, then they could get help in that area. So really good to know. Especially that we we still have nine states that have not expanded Medicaid to low-income adults and two big ones that have people with CF are Texas and Florida. So the only way that people are going to get Medicaid after a certain age is going to be to have SSI. And so in states that did not expand Medicaid to low-income adults, SSI is the way to get Medicaid. And for those people, if there's no other way to get health insurance, that's the road to Medicaid. For SSDI, you get Medicare, but only 29 months after you have stopped working more than that 20 hours a week and more than 1470. So there's a waiting period for Medicare. Online, it says 24 months, but there's another five-month waiting period. So it's really 29 months. Okay. So it takes a while to get Medicare, even once you've gotten approved for SSDI. But once you're approved for SSI, you can get Medicaid right away. And that's very helpful as well. That seems like a long wait for someone in financial need. Yeah, for Medicare. It's a long wait for Medicare. That's since the beginning of time or really when the Social Security Act was passed. So, Well, thank you so much for all this information. Um, Very helpful. And I hope people who need to definitely give you a call because they'll be in good hands for sure. We will look forward to talking to them and... We have a very committed team that have worked with us for a long time. So we have three lawyers and um, four paralegals, and they know a lot about CF, and they work very hard every day to help people. So we're also very grateful for them. And thank you, Laura. Thank you for all you do to help people. Um, You do an amazing job as well. And thanks for inviting me. Thank you, Beth. I really appreciate it. The original music in this podcast is performed by Kevin Allen. It's not complicated. Who happens to have cystic fibrosis. We all got our worries and fears. I know what's got you frustrated. But loving you is so all right. This has been the Living with Cystic Fibrosis podcast. For more information and to learn more about the Bonnell Foundation, visit our website at thebonnellfoundation.org. That's the B-O-N-N-E-L-L foundation.org. This podcast was sponsored by Beatrice, Genentech, and Vertex. It was produced by Jag and Detroit Podcasts. Follow our show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening right now.